In this video, I'm going to talk about seven signs you're bound to be a successful entrepreneur, not entrepreneur, entrepreneur, and get all the fame, the love, and the credit, and the benefits that come with being that person to a company. So I remember meeting Patrick in 2005. I'm 18 years old. I'm at this meeting and Patrick is, I've seen him go through all the phases. Salesperson, sales leader, sales manager, entrepreneur starting his own company in 2009, which has grown tremendously now. He started with 60 agents, over 20,000, 49 states. And then in 2013, I'm out back in the office, a story for another time, how I ended up working with him at the main office. But he says, Mario, he puts a camera on my desk and he says, I wanna start doing some content on YouTube. I wanna teach people, I wanna be there for the entrepreneur that doesn't have anyone to back them up and isn't getting the education in schools and I'm like, sure Pat, let's do it. And I wanted to go behind the scenes in the beginning and now go from behind the scenes to being in front of the camera because there's one area of business that is troubling me today. You see, the pandemic and the status quo and the way things are right now have really changed the dynamics of how an employee feels at work. I'm one myself. And there's a big difference between an employee and an entrepreneur. My hope is that this video gives you some insight and helps you identify if you have the signs, if you have the traits, if you have entrepreneurship in you. And if you do, you can capitalize on that. So many people feel right now they're at a job where I'm stuck. I can't make more money. I don't know how to get a promotion. What do I have to do in order to get a raise? Is there any opportunity for me to grow inside of this company well, my question is always, what are you doing about it? But not only what are you doing about it in terms of are you working harder, work smarter, not harder, and all the cliche stuff you hear, I'm talking about are you thinking like an entrepreneur? Are you thinking like somebody who is maybe didn't put up the risk, maybe is not the entrepreneur, but wants to protect the company and the vision of that entrepreneur? The founder and the level of risk that they took to establish this idea and turn it into something do you have what it takes and do you want to be the person that protects that vision? That's what entrepreneurship is all about. And there's a very big difference between an eight to five worker and an entrepreneur because they operate, an entrepreneur operates like an entrepreneur, but they're employees in their most basic level. If you go on Google right now and you type in, go do it, go type in entrepreneur, it'll say an um, employee. And that's what people want to think today that I'm just another employee at a company, I'm just another number. This mindset could be the difference that you've been looking for and it could be the difference between where you are now to where you could be at a company in just a matter of months, years, and maybe long term. What if you were the person leading that entire organization? What if you were the person that's maybe being going to be counted on to make some of the biggest decisions because you treat the company a little bit different? With that being said, I want to give you seven signs that you have entrepreneur blood in you and you're bound to be a successful asset to your company. Point number one you have a need to fix things. There, for some reason, there's, you're always trying to fix a process, you're trying to fix the department, you're trying to fix maybe a workflow, you're trying to fix one of the different uh, programs or softwares, you're always trying to fix something. You, just, you take it personal when something is broken or busted or not working and you just can't sleep. It keeps you up at night when your department or the company or a certain area, it doesn't matter what it is, you can hear about an issue happening three departments away from you. An area that maybe you can't even help in at the moment. Maybe there's a board uh, conversation that comes up and you overhear that there's a struggle with the company and you're doing research by yourself and it's 8 p.m. on a Saturday. What are you doing doing research on a Saturday night? You're on a Sunday and you're at church or you're with your family and all of a sudden it hits you. What if I did this? And you're making notes on your phone or you go to Barnes & Noble for no reason except to buy a book on how to be an asset to your company, you're constantly trying to fix something because you care. That's sign number one. The second sign of a successful entrepreneur is they can be counted on to execute. You've obviously seen hundreds if not thousands of videos on Vietainment. What you haven't seen is how many times we've been up until midnight or three, four in the morning, came in on a weekend, uh, we were collaborating, we forgot to press record, maybe we lost the footage. There's a lot of moments that you haven't seen and we're counted on to execute as a team. And for some reason, if you're a successful entrepreneur, there's a certain, there's a certain voice that just tells you, make that happen, make it happen. You have to get it done. You're just, you can be counted on to execute. 
Now, we have a great team here, and I've been fortunate to have great people working with us. But when Patrick has needed me to come through, I execute. And the reason that I execute is not because I want to make him happy and not lose my job. It means so much to me that the valuetainers or the entrepreneurs or the individuals that are watching the content, that they perceive our brand and they look at valuetainment with a certain level of consistency, predictability, reliability. You're counting on us and I take that personal. You see, a successful entrepreneur takes what the company is promising personal. It means so much more to you that if you don't execute, it's almost like the end of the world. You just wouldn't be able to live with yourself if you said you're going to do something for the audience or you're going to do something for the client or the customer and you don't deliver on that. It just bugs you so much. So a successful entrepreneur, they know how to execute and they want to execute. And when they're counted on to execute, they do it. And when somebody else isn't executing, they don't wait. They step up and say, let me help you and get that done. And then when everybody's talking around and they're sitting around the lunchroom and they're like, oh, we just got this done. They say, yeah, you know, it wouldn't have happened without John. It wouldn't have happened without Mary. I'm so glad that, you know, this person came in and stepped up when we needed them. They execute. Point number three, entrepreneurs want to earn everything. They want to earn the recognition. They want to earn the promotion. They want to earn the raise. They want to earn the bonus. They want to earn the vacation. They want to earn the incentive. They want to earn the right to lead. They want to earn the right to manage. They want to earn the right to be a right-hand person. They want to earn their seat in the room. They want to earn speaking on stage. They want to earn everything. They don't want freebies. They don't want handouts. They don't want you to make it easy for them. They don't want somebody to go and say, I made you. I did this for you. Because of me, you did that. They don't want that. They're okay with delayed gratification as long as there's justification with it. The justification of saying they paid the price, they earned it, and that's why they are who they are. They take that so personal, it almost bugs them when they get some free stuff. It bugs them when somebody else comes in, a real entrepreneur, when somebody else enters a room and they haven't paid a price, they're offended. Remember how the entrepreneur takes the risk? Well, the entrepreneur understands that risk and they value that risk which is where they, they want to do everything possible to get in the good graces of the founder that put up all that risk and say, look, I understand how much you put on the line. You put your family on the line, your savings on the line, your kids on the line, your time. When everybody was doing an anniversary or a birthday or a party, you were at the office late night. I get it. So let me earn the opportunity to sit next to you. I know I'll never be equal, but you know what? I want to do everything possible to just be as close as I can to paying that price. I want to earn it. Do you feel that way? You might have that entrepreneur blood. If you're already boiling inside, because I'm boiling inside right now, I wanted to earn it. Especially when you have somebody like a Patrick, somebody who is really running hard. If you have your CEO or your founder and they put up that risk, remember though, there's a difference between a founder and a CEO. That could be another video. If you want to hear about that kind of video, you know, comment below. But an entrepreneur wants to earn it. When I came to work with Patrick, I have my application here from the company I was at. I was selling car insurance at the time, and it says $12 an hour. David, it says $12 an hour here. And Patrick said, Mario, if you're willing to put in the effort and you put in this amount of time, I'll take care of you. But you got to give me your heart, mind, soul, effort, energy. You got to put everything into becoming the best that you can be. Not the best that he wanted, the best that Patrick wants, or the best that Itainment uh, can get. It's the best that you can be. Only you know your best. So quick tip, if you're a CEO, manager, or a founder, or you're leading an organization, don't give people handouts. Let the entrepreneurs weed themselves out. Don't give people, don't let entitlement be the language of an employee. Because a real entrepreneur is not entitled. They don't demand. They don't threaten. They earn. Point number four, and a sign that you're an entrepreneur and are bound to be a successful one, is you're overprotective of the brand and the company's reputation. But let me take that a step further. You're overprotective of the entire organization, including the founders, the employees, the people you work with, the vendors, the contractors, you know, whether somebody is coming to visit the office, if somebody's trying to get a tour, what's being said on the phone, what's on the website. You're overprotective of how you come across as a company. One, you understand what it took to build the company. Two, you're working late hours, you're showing up when I need it, you're earning, back to the other point, right? You're earning 
the opportunity to move up. So you're a little bit more overprotected than everybody else. Now what that does is it enhances the brand's value, but it also sometimes tends to get people to believe that you're a little too extreme or you care a little too much. But an entrepreneur thinks different. Remember, there's a difference between an employee mindset and an entrepreneur mindset. This is eight to five and whatever happens online in the company's reputation after hours is up to the company for them to figure out. An entrepreneur says, is everything that's happening after hours and online and right now okay for the brand? Is it healthy for the brand? Is somebody out there on social media representing the company the right way? Are every, is every department making sure that when they interact, whether it's in an email, a text, a phone call, anything, any kind of project, any new campaign, any new initiative, are we protecting the brand? Are we protecting the company? And will we be okay with what's out there? They're a little bit more overprotective. Point number five, and I'm gonna take this one from all the different mobster and mafia interviews we've done. There's a certain element of conciliary that an entrepreneur has. What do I mean by element of a conciliary? They have it in them. They're trustworthy. They're confidants. They're vaults when it comes to the company's proprietary information, proprietary uh, tools and resources. Uh, secrets, company trade secrets, vulnerabilities and weaknesses amongst the employees, amongst other people, maybe vulnerabilities in the company. Um, they're very, very good at protecting valuable information. They're trustworthy. You can count on them to make sure that if you need to talk about something or an area that needs to be improved and could possibly become um, a loss of an edge in the marketplace or maybe even a weakness or somebody else could come in and attack in that area or take market share, whatever it is, um, an entrepreneur is somebody you can count on. So when you've been given company information and you're out there at dinner or maybe it's even with family or you're at the bar or you're at a party or another you know, company comes in or you're giving a tour of your, your office, do you leak information? Because if you do, an entrepreneur wouldn't. An entrepreneur, when somebody says, hey, you know, you guys ain't perfect either, right? I heard that you guys are also blank, blank, blank. Well, an entrepreneur says, you know what? I'm not at liberty to discuss those details. You know what? Every company has its good and bad moments, but they don't simply give out information. They are trustworthy to the max. If you have that kind of quality where I can count on you with knowing me a little bit more, knowing the company's in-depth secrets and information a little bit more, you have another sign of being a strong entrepreneur. Point number six is value. And this one is dear to my heart because the channel's name, the brand's name is what? Valuetainment. So bringing value is one of the most essential things you could do as an entrepreneur. And if you do this all the time, then you have the entrepreneur blood in you. You're always trying to fix a process. You're trying to add ideas. You're asking questions like, what if? Why do we do things that way? You know, what if we started uh, attacking this area of the market? What if we introduced this new video segment? What if we started this channel? What if we started this product line? You're always saying, what if? And then you back that up with what? Research, questions, you're asking why? You know, this is the way we always done it in this department, why? And what can we do to improve it? You know, you take the weekend and you find out a way where you've heard there was a challenge in the company or another department and you found three different platforms. Think of this conversation, you walk into the office. You're just an average employee. Last week, by average, I mean you're an eight to five, nine to six, basically you just do your job. But you know what, I wanna be more valuable. So guess what you do this weekend? And I wanna challenge you to maybe do it this weekend. You go make a list of the different departments that you'd like to see grow or that maybe you heard need some help or maybe just aren't growing at the pace that the company would like to. And you're in a staff meeting and they're saying, I wish this department would go faster. So you go do some research and you put uh, something down like how to make this department grow faster, how this works, different softwares or top 10 ways to improve in this area. You make a list of all these ideas and you show up on Monday, you go to your boss or you go to that manager in that department and you said, hey, this weekend I thought about your department and I put together 20 ideas on how you can go out there and reach some of the goals you talked about in the last staff meeting. Hey boss, I just want to let you know, I noticed last week you were running and gunning and you were just really busy. Um, have you ever thought about implementing this type of a calendar? 
I found this project management tool. I found this new platform where we could do this. What if the whole company used it? I noticed we're spending this much money over here. What if we condense that and put it over here? You're bringing value. And people who bring value are irreplaceable. Because if you bring value, and you know how to bring value in different areas by asking questions, challenging the norm, and then doing the research and taking that initiative, it's really hard um, to have a meeting go by where this happens, and this happens all the time in our company. We'll be sitting there and we'll say, hey, we got a big project going on, we have a new campaign, or we have something fresh that's coming up. Who should we have in this meeting? And then the question is, who brings the most value for this kind of meeting? Who do we know is going to go out there and actually think and process and help to find good reasons? That person is always included. And when you're always included, you're always considered. And when you're considered and the company's making moves, those considerations become a part of what you get to benefit from. Point number seven and a sign that you're going to be a successful entrepreneur is you're constantly recreating yourself. Entrepreneurs, for some reason, they just can't stay the same. They don't like to be considered normal. They want to be anything but average, anything but normal. They just want to constantly grow and just reach their capacity. And what we consider that at Vitainment for somebody that goes out there and does their own research and you know isn't necessarily going back to school or back to college or going back to get a degree, they're autodidacts. They're self-taught people. A lot of the most successful entrepreneurs that I meet and they work inside of a company, they're always learning on their own. They take the weekend and they study. They pick up a new book. They try to improve a weakness. They focus on strengths. But they're always recreating themselves to where you'll be in meetings from one meeting to the next. And maybe in the first meeting, somebody brought up a concern and they snapped and they yelled back or they argued, right? They fought them. And then you go into a next meeting a month later and somebody brings up another issue and they start asking questions like, I totally understand. Or they start um, answering differently. I understand how you feel, you know. I can see why you would feel that way. May I suggest doing it this way? What if we would incorporate this? Is there any way that maybe we can try and test? And they just start changing. And because they're recreating themselves, they start changing. They start bringing such a different dynamic to the company where everybody wants to do that. Everybody wants to improve because they're improving as well. As they say, a rising tide raises all ships. Well, somebody who's constantly recreating themselves is also elevating all their peers and everybody else around them. So all in all, if any of these points resonated with you, any of them, then there's signs that you're bound to be a successful entrepreneur at a company. Entrepreneur is also a track to get yourself to some of the different heights of corporate America, some of the different heights of a job, and to be able to really maximize employment at any company. So if you had any of these signs, I'm actually very curious how many of you relate to this message, how many of you are behind the scenes but you watch this and maybe it brought some value to you. I want to know what other kind of things you would want to know from a guy who's been behind the scenes, not the most comfortable, not the most secure on camera, but I'm just trying to redefine how we look at walking into work every day. Because just like entrepreneurs have a lot to look forward to because they're their own boss, well, entrepreneurs have a lot to look forward to because we get to protect that vision and partake in all the benefits and all the things that come with it. As they unlock doors, we get to kind of look through them as well. And we get to live vicariously to the people that are putting up that risk and then becoming some leaders they can depend on to hold it down and to maintain that vision and to hopefully take it to the next level when they step away. That's a different conversation. Till the next video, my name is Mario Aguilar. I work with Patrick, work with Vitainment, and I look forward to sharing more entrepreneur stories with you. While you're here, don't forget to click the link in the description to find out more about the vaultconference.com, our three-day live event. The last time we did it was when we hit a million subscribers. It's been a while, and this time we're going to have it hosted again by Patrick Bed David, where he's going to be speaking and interviewing people as well. We're also going to have Billy Bean, MLB team owner, but also the inspiration behind Moneyball the movie. We're going to have Grandmaster Gary Kasparov that's going to be there, and seven-time Mr. Olympia Phil Heath. Among the content partners, we're going to have networking, a vault manual, almost 200 pages of fill-in notes, case studies. We're going to have interactive networking, immersive type of conversations, the critical thinking, the yacht party, after party. It's the conference for entrepreneurs. And a conference is going to give you a lot of theories uh, from people who've witnessed it and also have applied it. It's going to be powerful. 
So look forward to seeing you at the live event. Click on that link and go check out about the vault as well.